God. Oh, we're back. <laughs> Welcome to Calling Out with Susan Pinsky. So, we never have no technical problems at the beginning of a show unless we have spirits in the audience. And they may all be in this room right now. Do you feel them, Kyle? This is Kyle Thomas. He's my... Uh, empath astrologer du jour he's here uh very very well known in the um astrology world you can file him find him at mr kyle Tom underscore thompson on twitter and he is a um regular contributor on many uh magazines cosmo horoscope.com and astrology.com correct yep. And also, um, I'm just doing this off the top of my head because I don't have my notes in front of me because that threw me a little bit. But um, he is going to talk about what's going on in the world right now uh, from an astrological point of view and everything that goes on in the universe that I have no idea about. I'm clearly more attuned to uh, psychic mediums and clairvoyance, but I love his jive he's got it down he knows everything about everything in astrology but um just kind of funny because we were waiting for the camera to turn on and everything went blank on caleb's system so if as usual halfway through the show all of a sudden we go we stop playing if you're on the line or if you're on the um, restream or on facebook or youtube or periscope just um Come back to the next feed because we'll just reload. We'll just go. We'll just keep going. We'll keep going. Um, also, we are very fortunate to have. Um, first of all, I just want to say hello. Okay, hello I to you and to everyone who is tuning in live, and also anyone that will be watching this later on in the feed. It is such <laughs> an honor to be able to connect with Susan and the entire team, and really reach out to all of the people that want to talk about the things that are going on in our lives and across the world and so. in the universe yeah uh, absolutely. on a whole <laughs> and i know that i know that some people's are, are really interested in the debates tonight and i am too uh i i have to say i can watch the rerun i i don't have to be there in person but um i do give my best to our country and hope that the best candidates win um, otherwise, I prefer not to watch the debates because they, I, they make me insane. But um, I and I, I'm not discrediting anybody that is into it and wants to, you know, find out what what's going on. But I don't know. I'll I'll find out tomorrow. Um, anyway, so we also want to introduce on the line, uh, Kalise Simone. She's a psychic medium. She's been on our show many, many times. She's been on many of our production shows. She's done a really good job. We were kind of running over those today. Hello, Khalees. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Susan. Hi, Kyle. Hello. So um, Khalees is a New York-based uh, psychic medium originally from Australia. Uh, you can find her at Khalees Simone. She is a, um, in a C -A -L -I -S -E -S -I -M -O -N -E, just, you know, no double S's or M's or anything like that. She um, also is a, um, a protege of Lisa Williams. So Lisa Williams <laughs> is one of the, you know, world-renowned uh, psychic mediums who has trained many, many, many people like Psychic Rebel Colby and Khalees Simone and Jennifer Schaefer. She's, she kind of uh, validates their abilities, and um, I've known her for a long time. She's done a lot of our shows over the past, like, what, 10 years? <laughs> Feels like 10 years, but it's probably been, like, Six years, maybe? Uh-oh. Are you asking me? Yes. <laughs> How long have we oh, been sorry, doing? Yes. Oh, gosh, have we been doing? I thought you were talking about Lisa. Lisa's amazing. Um, we, I've been doing your shows uh, for about six or seven years now. Oh, wow, I can't believe it. Now that I think about it. And it's gone so quickly and it's been so much fun. So, yeah, it's it's been an amazing couple of years. Yeah, and it's really funny because, like, um, you know, I haven't used a lot of astrologists. I've had Sloan Bella on my show, but I have done, I mean, we did like 140 podcasts before this event. And, you know, we've done a few of these live stream shows. And it's kind of a weird thing because, you know, I I just sort of had to maneuver way, my way through and, and see what I could find, you know, who I could find that in the psychic world who was, who was a... You know, who's an actual psychic medium or a clairvoyant medium 
or a really good astrologer, you know, over the years. So I try not to, I mean, I'd like to bring new people in, but I have to make sure that they're not going to waste my time. So, um, but honestly, I've known Khalees for a long time. She is good at what she does and she's super nice and cute and and she is available in New York if anybody needs a psychic medium. Um, I have a lot of friends who go to her. They love her. And, um, and that in combination with some uh, astrological information today will make me really happy. Oh, I didn't change cameras. Oh, shoot. I forgot. Anyways, <laughs> Caleb, where that's were you? I wasn't sure what you were talking, but that's okay. <laughs> I was talking to the sun in the sky. But um, all right. Okay. So I want to let Kyle get into what's going on on a grand scale in the universe, like what's going on with COVID-19, what's going on with how the moon and the stars and the sun all line up, you know, we just had a full moon, what does that mean, what does it mean to be Mercury in retrograde, or Mars in retrograde, or Capricorn in retrograde, or <laughs> or Taurus, or, or, you know, there's all these things, but at, right now I know there's something to do with Capricorn and Mars, and maybe even Mercury, so... Let's let Kyle, you know, give us this information. Absolutely. So I kind of, you know, want to go through some of these things pretty quickly and give people a general idea of what has been going on this year. So 2020 has been a year that we knew was going to be very transformational because we're having a lot of conjunctions in the stars, which represents new beginnings. Whenever a planet is meeting another planet, that creates that sort of new pattern that is coming forth. At the beginning of the year, we saw a lot of that very powerful energy initiating COVID-19 and spreading it worldwide. And that has also going to, that's also going to be increasing once again because the planets Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto that were very active in creating that synthesis are now awake again. They have come out of a sleepy retrograde period and will be continuing to, you know, spread this powerful um, pandemic all over the world. The thing about this here, though, is that I always see that a challenge in astrology, which would be a square, an opposition, for those people that do know astrology more uh, intrinsically, studied these are here to help us evolve and to help us grow and meet a challenge in order to better uh, reach fulfillment or, or change our lives or change society as well and so that's you know definitely a major transformational situation that has been happening this year also earlier on when we first started doing shows this year we talked about a very powerful Mars retrograde. And oh, yeah. we always look at what the planet rules as well as where it falls in the sky. And Mars is passion, it's drive, it's health, it's strength. And with it actually being in the zodiac sign of Aries, that is a very ego-driven ego sign and also rules the body of humanity. And so the thing about this is that Mars is spending six months in Aries, and this began at the end of June and is going to last here until January 6th of 2021. Oh. This creates a big learning curve for us because we're all collectively wow. being affected by this sort of energy. Yeah, we are. So Everybody is. <laughs> totally. Well, the thing that's actually the, the problem, I guess you would say, is that Mars, too, is going through a retrograde. Mars only goes retrograde once every two years or so. And when it's asleep, I guess you would say, uh -huh. its powers, its energy turn in on itself. And Mars is war, Mars is aggression. Ooh. And when that energy turns inside, it cannot be released in a healthy way. So, you know, we release that through sexuality, through competition, through, you know, meeting our goals, meeting our ambitions. Mm. And when all of those obstacles are going to be suddenly, when, you know, it, be placed in front of us, it naturally is just going to create more frustration and conflict no matter where you are in the world. And so naturally, since September 9th, this energy has been activated. It's going to continue until about November 13th of this year. So we're in this struggle bus period in all sorts of ways. But the thing is here is that this specific Mars retrograde is especially intense, not only because it's in Aries, which is our ego, our hungers, our desires, the things that we want more than anything. It's also clashing 
with some very intense planets, for instance, Pluto and Saturn. Yeah, Pluto sounds scary to me. Pluto is death. Pluto is transformation. Pluto is rebirth. Is that the little one at the very end? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. But it's also <laughs> clashing with Saturn, and Saturn rules structure. I remember structure. the little, it's very gaseous, <laughs> right? Pluto. Yes, yes. It's very gaseous, and it's at the end of the solar system. Yes. And it's the furthest away from the sun. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yes, so you're See, I'm old. About For that. me to remember that is pretty good. Oh, either that, or I had to listen to it when my kids learned it. So totally, I, I'm trying to remember. But Pluto just sounds like a not a great uh, thing to be in. But what what about the the is it Mercury retrograde that comes every 30 years or something like that? No. So we're going to be actually talking about the Great Conjunction a little bit later, which is our okay. message of hope and excitement that I feel oh, like okay. Let's we can all really yeah, okay, okay. You know, jump into. I don't want to get ahead of the game. Oh, no, all good. Uh, but just to kind of finish up that focus of Mars retrograde is okay. so everyone's feeling intense. Everyone's feeling, you know, angry. There's this collective frustration and we're, we're seeing all of this internalized pain, you know, occurring. And we're meeting these obstacles, whether it be with, you know, financial matters, government matters, you know, people in our lives. And like I said, we're, we're clashing in order for us to break patterns that are no longer serving our higher good in our lives and collectively right. as a race. Right. Oh. So that's, that's the big thing that we're definitely dealing so with. So blame that on Mars and Pluto. Well, Mars, it's, it's, more complicated than that because <laughs> I'm trying it's, to simplify it. Yeah, you know, so. but it's like when, for instance, we actually have Mars squaring uh -huh. Pluto, which is a 90 degree angle uh -huh. on on Friday. Oh, and so great. we're going to be feeling this frustration oh, all God, week. I felt it's it just, today. Do, oh, yeah. Can really? some people feel oh, it early? Oh. Yes. Can some people get the vibe early? Because I walked in here like I wanted to kill somebody. Absolutely. Well, for instance, the thing that you're feeling today, though, <laughs> is that Mercury... I said S my D like four times, and Caleb <laughs> mentioned it. Whoa. <laughs> I said this is going to be a, a, a definitely a DSer tonight. Yeah. Well, the thing here, though, is that <laughs> Mercury and Uranus are opposite today, which is 180 degrees apart, and that creates chaos, confusion, okay. and technology, oh. and thoughts, nervous energy, just you know, explosions of all sorts of different kind of activity and, you know, Oh, anxiety. but we're having a so national that, debate tonight. Exactly. So can you imagine? But no, the thing that was crazy is that the day that we had the, <laughs> oh, no. the presidential debate, Mars squared Saturn exactly. So we knew that it was going to be extremely problematic oh, oh. and there was just, it was just going to explode because that oh, was wow. the 29th, I believe, right? Yeah, it was, that was of not, September, right? I, yeah. But I know, looked in the stars and I was like, well, this is insane. not going to be good. And the same thing today, I'm expecting with with both VPs, there's going to be things that are said that are not actually going to help the cause of either party. Right. There's going to be a lot of frustration. And then also there's going to be a lot of activity and debate that everyone's kind of pulling them apart. And <laughs> it's just, it's going to, again, well, that's the stars why we're are here, showing. Because I hate that shit. Okay, frustration. so, all right. I, yeah. I prefer to, yeah. to get through the anger of, of, the, <laughs> of the horoscopes, you know, the, the moon and the stars. And and get to the good stuff, but um, totally no. But I understand because there is definitely something to do with the universe that is not understandable by common people like me. Yeah, well, I just I just can't stand to see that in in public display. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Well, and this is something that I always say about with astrology is that it's predictive, so I can tell you that these things are happening, but you can also feel it, and it's productive. So if you know how to use an energy, you can improve your life right. or hide away. Like I release yeah, sure. graphics online that are best days and challenging days every uh, or uh, for each month online, and that's why I'm just like. Take a seat, you know, try to yeah. not do no, something I, really big on those days. Khalees, what are your feelings on this? Um, just in terms of everything that's coming up, I mean, I've definitely felt those energies that Kyra was talking about. And I, I felt it shift sort of perhaps the second week of September was when I really started to feel everything going from amazing to just like a grinding halt. But as we move forward with everything that's going on, you know, in the US, I, I do feel that um, there's going to be a lot more noise. I I kept picking up that there's a turning point next week with the election. I wasn't quite sure whether it was a positive inflection or a negative one, but I, I kept getting this feeling that in about seven days from now, there will be a significant turning point in everything that's going on, quite a pivotal moment. So let's keep an eye out for that and see what happens. Mercury goes, uh, goes retrograde a week from today. Oh, really? <gasps> okay. Yeah. So perhaps that's all tied in together. That will be very interesting. 
It goes into Mercury retrograde? Yeah, so we're... So it'll be inside out? Yeah, October <laughs> is the slowest month of this year. And That's it's, what you said, yeah. Yeah, definitely going to be mm. a time when we need to take a step back. We need to surrender to the universe, flow with it. Right. You know, try not to force things at this time, not start things, don't initiate a business, don't get married, don't start a relationship, anything. Because... <laughs> It's Khalees? going to. I don't know. That's badly <laughs> bad luck for Khalees. Oh gosh, don't say that. Well, you, you, <laughs> it's funny because so Khalees and I actually traded readings a couple months ago, and we just wanted mm. to kind of dive into each other's lives. And I actually, do you want to tell the story? Like, um, oh yeah, I mean, I don't really mind, but. Um, <laughs> Carl told me a lot of amazing things. And one of the things he told me was the first week of October, I would have a lot of attention from the opposite sex. And I was like, okay, cool. That sounds like fun. You know, I took my notes and then <laughs> Whatever. lo and behold, the first week of October, it's like ping, 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 text message, text message, text message. And I'm like, what is going on? And then sure enough, as soon as the second week hit, it all just kind of went, you know, and just died <laughs> down. So, so it's will it pretty come back after can, October? Yes. But you're okay. kind of busy in okay. October anyway, so you don't have time for men, right? you got to make some money. I this is permanently don't have time for dating, so, yeah. I think, <laughs> I, I think not being a good month for dating won't make any difference to my past, present, or future the way things are at the oh, moment. Oh, <laughs> come on. Come on. Let's, come on, Kyle. Tell, give her some no, good I, news. Yeah, we've talked about this before. I don't see you alone, and when we looked into your charts – there's a lot of activity that is really... I mean, dating really... during COVID sucks. You know, it's like... Right. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you say earlier, you're like, yeah, I got a text. Calls and you're a psychic. You know you're chats, not going to be you know? alone. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Yeah. I'm engaged. I I'm have... engaged on the phone. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You know, it's, it's really hard to read for yourself, but there are things True. that whether you're psychic or not, you just know are going to happen in your life. And I, mm. I do feel that marriage is there for me, that a family is there for me. Um, and I, I do feel it getting closer and closer. So, you know, I'll I'll call you guys back when, when I've got the ring. Well, and the thing that it's all, also really <laughs> that I love about astrology is that we can see that when there's certain timing when it's more likely to happen. And so, for mm. instance, you know, I have clients that come to me from all over the world and they're like, when am I going to get married? And I'm like, okay, well, these are you know, the very specific transitory times when your chart is activated that would bring that kind of, you know, person to you. But, you know, there are certain astrology, you know, types that you really focus on and you can just look at someone's chart and say, you're going to be 37 and get married and you're going to have four marriages. And Really? Yeah, you can. But I, that's not something that f interests me personally But then in if studying. you predict it, it doesn't come true. Exactly. And they come back because and go, you're such an asshole. Exactly. Because here's the thing. I want to create a, a <laughs> platform using astrology to empower people and help them to make choices right. and to, in, you know, encourage them to create that life. You know, right, right. for instance, I've had people that looked at my chart and were like, oh, okay, you know, you're going to get married this many times or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that doesn't help me because I'm in love right now and I want to stay in love mm. right now. And I want to build that belief that we're going to be together forever. Right. So, you know, that's why I feel like those ultimatum sort of right, astrological right. predictions just don't You can't help predict people. too because I think that people can manifest different lives for themselves absolutely you know it's like i i want to say that when i hear something positive about myself that i can manifest that um and you know it's it's kind of a weird thing to have somebody tell you you know in 20 years you're gonna get married and have kids yeah you're gonna have three boys and a girl well, well that's here's, a weird thing here's one thing you are a wonderful voice you are a beautiful soul and you help people all the time Aww. and you continue to do so so yeah that's i mean beautiful i that's about just yourself. yeah and that's a, a <laughs> good thing to tell me because i'll continue <laughs> to do that but i what have Kyle a, was saying though was kind of interesting that's the the connection between a psychic reading and an astrology reading is we see these opportunities where yes. things can come up but just because i for example in a reading might see hey you can marry this person that doesn't mean you're going to do it you still have free will and it's the same with Kyle and what he sees, he'll see moments in time where it's more likely and more possible that things will happen, but you'll always have free will I and totally you'll always be that. able to walk away from situations if you I don't totally agree it. with that because we had a we had a caller a couple of weeks ago. It's a friend of mine and she was um her her boyfriend, soon to be husband, because they're engaged, 
uh, had to move to Arizona and somebody read her and said, oh, you're going to go somewhere and it's going to be kind of quiet. It'll be a different lifestyle. And then you're going to have a baby. And she's like, the last thing I want is a baby. Okay. She's like, no way. Hell to the no. Like, uh, uh, but I was like, yeah, wow. you better be careful. And I asked her, I go, are you on birth control? And she said, no, I go, we'll get on some birth control because you're going to have a baby. <laughs> yeah. Cause it was Colby, I think, or something. And so anyways, but, but her, she kind of agreed with it, you know, like, well, maybe I will move. But he ended up not going and he came back. Mm. So I think that um, even if you are being told what could or would happen, I think the reality of it sometimes makes people really want to change it. You know, you can you can control your destiny, you know, if you know what's coming. Because you, we, like you said, we all have free will. And it, it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to happen that way. The thing so, I will and that's say why about the astrology. Reading system. But with astrology, it might be different because yeah. the stars and the moons. Are blue. Well, because if the door <laughs> is shut to you, too. yeah, when the door is shut to you, you cannot get what you're looking for. So, for instance, like the example that I yeah. always use is that in 2017, I was looking to my future and I was like, when am I going to find a good boyfriend? Like someone that is wonderful to me and treats me with love and yeah. we have a good rapport and the sex is hot and all of that. Uh -huh. And the stars showed me I wasn't going to find someone until literally the end of August of 2019. And I was really upset because I was like, <laughs> I have so much love to give and I'm so sick of these awful men and blah, 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 you know. And But every time for those two years that I would like go out with someone or start casually seeing someone... I, it wouldn't work out. Like we weren't in alignment. And then exactly on the days that I had predicted, that's when I started dating my partner. And oh, so wow. that's the exact same kind that's of so astrology. True. That's exactly yeah, that's how it happens. Yeah, totally. Like if the window is open, it'll come. If the if the door is closed, it's just move on. Just like focus on work for two years or yes. whatever. Yeah, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we have a few callers. It's not the usual 10,000 people calling in because I guess everybody's kind of busy on the, and I haven't really, I didn't really promote it that much. I didn't want to upset anybody, but um, should we take a call? Yeah, sure. Let's okay, let's see. Let's uh, talk to Charles. I love having male callers. It's always fun. Hello, Charles. Welcome to Calling Out with Susan Pinsky. What's going on with you? Hello, how are you guys doing? Hi. Uh, Hi. Uh, I'm so happy that you're back. I was sad when the podcast went away for so long, I got to say. Well, we're back. See, that's what I'm saying. You, you really reach people. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm up against the president tonight. Um, well, got, <laughs> vice president. Oh, vice president. I've got a few people. questions. I'll shoot them all out. Uh, I don't realize uh, what you can from it. Uh, first thing is I've got a bunch of ghosts in my house and I just want to know what's going on with them. Uh, also I try to communicate with the ghosts back when I was little, I was able to speak to ghosts more often. Now I find I've shut off, uh, where some people say that they drink so that the ghosts don't talk to them. That's pretty <laughs> much opposite, opposite for me when I get drunk, that's oh, really? when they decide that they want the mouth and then just a general uh, kind of information about my year if you have time when is your birthday by the way October 2nd oh my brother's birthday so you're a Libra okay cool so do you want to take the ghost stuff I'm not really I'm I'm not a medium, so I yeah. can't really talk on that. Yeah. Um, Charles, I, I have to start by saying I don't actually um, necessarily sign on to ghosts, but I do work with spirits. So I can talk to you about spirits. Um, when it comes to ghosts, what a lot of people pick up on is they pick up on a, an energy in the house of people that lived there before, and I refer to that as a residual energy. So I would encourage you to consider the fact that the people who lived there before you may have had very um, eccentric personalities or just strong energy, and what you may be picking up on is the residual energy of the people that lived there before you. Now, in order to um, sort of combat that, what I would recommend is I would recommend 
to start by clearing the house and clearing I don't mean pulling out all the furniture and vacuuming it obviously vacuuming is a fantastic start but I want you to sage the house <laughs> so you can get some sage some palo santo incense whatever your thing is and just kind of do a smudging ceremony you can look it up online um, and just do a general energy clearing of the house um, the more you communicate with spiritual energy the stronger it gets so I would actually encourage you not to do the communication not to chat to them and just do the cleansing and then put your own energy out into the house and in order to put positive energy into the house you can either play music that you really love you can um, dance around the house you can ring bells you can do meditations just anything to push out your own energy into the house in a very peaceful way you can put fresh flowers in the house and things like that so just start by changing up the energy of where you live and don't sign on to or create this concept of a haunted house because you can create something that doesn't exist if you start putting that vibration out there mm. does that help uh yeah it does uh we've done smudging before uh i've actually mm -hmm. talked to my husband and my daughter about it and whereas we don't think that there's a portal necessarily here mm -hmm. uh, ghosts are actually just drawn uh i don't think oh. my daughter is more sensitive oh. and that they okay. come they're actually a lot more active when she leaves for the summer to go to her grandmother's house. Like they're upset that she's not here, but she uh, actually doesn't like being at home alone. Yeah. So what I would recommend. How old is your daughter, by the way? She's 16 now. 16. Okay. Yeah. I, thank you for that extra piece of information. Sometimes with smudging, you do have to do it on a regular basis. So you might have to do it once a week for like three months. It's not necessarily something where you can do it once and then not do it again for another year. Sometimes in the beginning, you've got to do it quite regularly just to really reset the energy. So if you find that it is annoying your daughter or it's frustrating to you, just do that weekly smudging. And perhaps your house is on a ley line. Like you might want to look at the geography and the topography of where you're based and see if there's any old riverbeds because that can also be another reason why a particular house has more spiritual activity than another one and I say that from experience because I grew up in a bedroom that was right next to an old riverbed so never got any sleep as a child okay um, now in terms of your daughter okay. if she really wants to switch off her connection with them I would recommend putting some big crystals in her room perhaps a lovely piece of quartz perhaps a lovely piece of onyx and a piece of amethyst and she could put those on her desk near her bed on nights where she feels she needs a little bit of an extra block but it's just somewhere in the room and that will also help nullify the energy and bring in more of a positive vibration if she wants if there's a moment where she wants to sort of push away any extra spirits she can call upon her own spirit guides or her own gatekeepers depending on what her beliefs are to sort of ask those spirits to step back if she doesn't feel confident doing it herself okay wow she got Does a lot of information so I love uh, that. so charles so okay. you think I'll leave that with you you think you're intuitive right because you can you said that you when you drink it gets worse you do you used to yeah but when, but when now, but because some people, when they drink, they can't, it seems to block it out, you know, or whatever. But yeah. you think your daughter, you think your daughter just has that intuition as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think Khalees is good at smudging and cleaning out the spirits. She's done it for me a few times in my Upper West side apartment and um, she's, she can see all that stuff. Um, but Kyle, you maybe definitely. Kyle, Okay. I'm just going to say one last thing. Charles, you definitely do have the ability to connect to spirit, and I want you to know that it's real and it's normal. So I don't want you to think that I think that you don't that because you wouldn't pick up on that energy if you didn't. The two of you definitely have mediumship abilities. I just want to steer them in the right direction so that you can harness them for a productive use rather than feeling like the spirits are controlling you. So, Khalees, why are they there? Well, there's always spirits around all the time. It's just whether or not you choose to tune into them. And if you do tune into every residual frequency all the time, it can make you feel a little bit overwhelmed. So, yeah. you know, that's why I encourage you, you know, do some meditations, put the crystals around, just keep tuning out, tuning out, especially when you've been drinking because drinking alcohol can open up those energies again and you'll tune into whatever vibration you're attuned to. So alcohol has a lower vibration. You're going to start picking up on lower vibrational entities it's better that you just work on sort of tuning out and then when you need to speak to spirit, you can open that up at your will. 
Where are you located? You see I'm anybody around me right now? I'm sorry. Do I see anyone around you right now? There, there is one woman who steps forward, and I do want to get on to Carl because I know he has things to tell you. Um, there is a woman who steps forward who looks older, and she's got a bit of um, what I call like a hunch to her shoulders, and I feel like she might have stooped her neck forward. Um, this woman does feel as if, I can't tell, is she on your, she may be on your mother's side of the family. Um, and I do feel that she has some kind of European connection. She's got a slight cough, but I don't feel that she passed from a lung disease. And I do feel like she cares for you, but she's trying to get you to pay attention to someone at work or something at work where there's about to be a sudden change. It's not going to bankrupt you, but there's about to be a sudden change with your work. And she's just saying, make sure you know what's going on and that you stay on top of all of your plans with your work and everything sort of the systems and the processes because I feel like you're just kind of showing up doing the job and then leaving and I, I want you to like look under the surface does that make mm. sense yeah that actually does who do, okay. who do you think does, that is do you recognize that woman no I don't recognize her at all my mother's side is actually mostly uh, Mexican so that would have to be my father's side. On your father's side, do you recognize that woman, just in case I placed it with the wrong parent? Because she's definitely for you. She's not, no one I've ever met before. Not my ghost. I recognize her, but that message I do understand. Okay, maybe she'll ring to you later. She's got her hair up like that, just in case. You can, I don't know if you can see me, but she's, um, got, her hair's she's putting it like in a bun. In a yeah. bit of a bun or something. Um, check out the pictures. It might be someone you didn't know you were related to, but yeah, she's definitely there. And if we had more time, I'd go into more detail. But, How do we know it's not you know, somebody that who, I see. Is, who was in the house or something it, it, or isn't related to him? They wouldn't come through that strong. This, this definitely feels like a relative from what I can see. The other people that I feel that he's picking up on the residual energy of in the house, they're, they're from a different era. Oh, okay. Their energy is more separate. I don't really know how to explain it. It just doesn't feel connected. Sometimes I just get this sort of knowing and this feeling. This woman definitely feels like she's one of yours. She's one of yours. When, There's a strong A, like a Kathy or you. an Andrea. Or, sure. Yeah. Uh, there is a woman who comes by periodically into the house she we lovingly refer to her as the nurse but she is very unpleasant she likes to come in pull off the covers oh. and just give you bad feelings oh and then she'll stay like in the doorway and just glare at you does she have a bun on her, her but i just know her no okay. <laughs> but do you know anything about her have you cons oh, do you own here? the house? <laughs> I'm sorry? No, so in all seriousness, like, do you own this house or are you renting? We own it. This is a bit, this is a bit hard for me to say, but, um, have you considered living somewhere else? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Look, I'll just be really honest. Some, some uh, houses have more spiritual energy than others. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep in mind, uh, I actually feel, and I've had this experience, sorry, go on. Uh, we can't move. Uh, my husband's nephew died in this house, and he just does not want to leave him. I wonder well, if it's connected to that. Have you done a ceremony, like was there a proper funeral and everything for the nephew? Yes, but this okay. house meant a lot to his nephew, and we have his uh, chef outfit hung up as a, uh, in a picture frame in the kitchen because he loved to cook. Oh, so. that's nice. I, I understand that there's an emotional, sentimental connection to the house, so you will have to sort of grapple with this at your own rate. What I'm picking up on at the same time is that the energy of the spirits that are around the house will continue for as long as you live there. And I feel like in order to sort of break this cycle of visitations, you will need to relocate. So you might find if you go on a vacation or if you're somewhere else, the activity is a lot less. But I really feel like it's connected to the house, even though you feel that they sort of follow you to that house. Um, I just feel like as long as you're in there, you're going to have these spirits coming to chat to you or to 
pull off the covers or whatever they seem to be doing. Um, and, you know, one easy thing you can do, smudging helps, crystals help, your own energetic boundaries are going to make the biggest difference. So by you putting up that boundary and just saying, this is my space, or just it's not open just embracing it spirits, maybe? Can you just embrace I, it? And I don't feel you should. Out, the more you it embrace is. it, the stronger. Yeah, well, exactly. That's go away, to not, not the time, you know. <laughs> Whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So just sort of putting out that energy and saying, this is my house and you're not welcome. That really will sort of break the connection. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I hope yeah. that helped. You're welcome. Okay. We're going to take helped. a quick break and we'll be right back. With so much focus on keeping ourselves and our loved ones safe and healthy, it's easy to forget that most of us are going to experience things like allergies, colds, possibly even the flu. So reminding you, proper hydration is crucial for all of these things. Remember, even slight dehydration can make you feel like you're getting sick, and none of us need that anxiety right now, that's for sure. That's where Hydrolyte comes in. Longtime fans will remember my obsession with Hydrolyte, which is simply the best oral rehydration product I've tried. I'm even more excited to introduce their brand new single-serve powder sticks. Simply pour one powder stick into a glass of water. They recommend seven ounces. The powder dissolves almost instantly, creating the perfect balance of sodium, glucose, and water delivers up to four times the electrolytes of your typical sports drink. The other great news about Hydrolyte's new powder sticks, they're 100% all natural, no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. They're available in flavors like orange and lemonade, and they taste great. Hydration is crucial, and Hydrolyte is fastest and easiest way to stay ahead of it. Get your supply of Hydrolyte powder sticks now at hydrolite.com slash drdrew. Again, that's h-y-d-r-a-l-y-t-e dot com slash D-R-D-R-E-W, and then use that code DrDrew25 at checkout. <laughs> oh my god we're back okay so <laughs> so drew just came back upstairs to get his computer and he goes i go how are the debates i guess they're great it's over now right no i think they're still going but oh, they okay. are they're exactly what you expect so, and, and everyone's playing their role precisely as you anticipate so people are on twitter and they're they're putting a picture of drew up next to Mike Pence. Mike Pence. <laughs> and, they, and he's been down there. It looks like he's been on Twitter more than he's been watching the debates. Oh, <laughs> what, I went outside. I went outside and got on Twitter. It's funny. It is. There he is. Look. All my friends, oh, are, all my wait, friends are making fun Pence. of me. That's somebody else. And then finally Lauren Savan came in and said, look, I don't want to get political here, but VP Pence wishes, wishes he had Drew's specs and pecs. And I thought, ooh, specs and pecs. Well done. <laughs> But and then it, Danny Zucker got involved, Jenny Johnson. It's going. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a it's, cast of... Yeah, it's yeah, going. Nobody's watching my show, but wait. Nor, wait. The, nor the debates. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, they're all on Twitter. <laughs> I, might have to, I might have to share our, our Periscope right now just because there's a big, a big chat going on out there and maybe get some more people to call in. So um, I'm here with... Um, I'm here with Kyle Thomas. We're going to take another call, and also Kali Simone, psychic medium. Kyle is a, a astrologer with some intuition as well. I have to say he's a little psychic on the side, um, but he's going to uh, talk to Sasha. Hi, Sasha. Yep. How are you? Hey. So Sasha, I'm good. how are you? I'm good. Sasha sent her. She's a friend of mine. She's she's been on a previous show. I'm not gonna say who she is, but um, she sent in her <laughs> birth date and all her information so that you could give her an astrological reading. Absolutely. So I'm gonna pull up your chart right now. So the thing here that I noticed is that the the window that you gave me for your time of birth is a little bit too large in order to really pinpoint your okay. rising sign. So the thing is, I can still talk very, very intuitively about what is going on just from your sun sign. And this is just something that I think people can know uh, as a general you know, rule of astrology. 
In all of my studies and in all of my personal predictions, I always do find that the sun sign is strongest as an indication of actual events taking place in your life. So I usually say it's like 60 to 75% of the things that are happening. And I am always learning and evolving as an astrologer, but I've been charting all sorts of things in my life and in all my clients and friends and families and lovers and exes lives as well for decades at this point in time. And like I said, I always still find that the sun sign is very indicative of where you are moving in your path at that moment. The rising sign gives us flair and flesh and color to the journey and really does also help indicate where you are moving as well. But like I said, even just from your sun sign, I can see a lot of information. Basically what we have here is that because of where I put in from your natal chart that I see, you are on the cusp of being uh, a Scorpio rising or a Sagittarius rising. And like I said, even two hours of a difference of a birth time can really indicate a very different spectrum of where your chart lines up. So I'd like to really specifically talk about the Gemini side of you. I love Geminis. Geminis are so important to me. I have so many friends. My mother is a Gemini. I have a lot of planets in Gemini. That's why I'm speaking all the time. Uh, But the thing about here is that Mm -hmm. I see that you're going through a very powerful eclipse cycle in your sun sign. And so whenever anyone is going through an eclipsic cycle in your sun sign, it's about your personal power. It's about your destiny calling to you and seeing your life shift very rapidly. This hasn't officially begun yet because the first one happens on November 30th of this year. The second one will be on June 10th of 2021. So between those two specific uh, eclipses, you are going to kind of have this rebirth Phoenix moment that's taking place for you. The thing is, there's also a huge indication from your chart of the different kinds of eclipses that are also affecting you that are not just in your sun sign. For instance, we are having a lot of eclipses that are taking place in Sagittarius. So any Sagittarius that is listening, including, including my lovely Khalees, uh, you are going through <laughs> that same sort of eclipse cycle too. So you would be stepping into your personal power. However, whenever... What if you're on the cusp? It's still always, it's, it's, it's very finite in the kind of astrology that I practice. So even if you are on the cusp of, let's say, for instance... I am a Taurus sun, but I'm very close to the very beginning of Gemini, so I'm still going to read for Taurus. I may okay. have indications in my chart that, you know, Gemini aspects are bleeding into my personality because, you know, when we're looking at the natal chart, we're looking at all of the aspects, the, the different houses, the different planetary positions, and also the interactions between the aspects in the chart. But um, going back to what I was saying about that Sagittarius eclipse energy, so all of the Sagittarians are already moving into this acceptance of their destiny, you know, being reborn, growing into this power. And your first eclipse Excuse took place. Excuse me, Kyle. One second, one second. The dog is digging a hole under both cameras. Okay, Rex, that Rex. kind of looks like he was humping something. To, but I know okay. you're, okay. Some kind of you guys share the clip. I mean, he, he, somehow. Somehow he's he's working. He's digging spirits. He's working around every leg of the camera, like (laughs) digging. I'm like, oh God, he's going to knock a camera. Okay. (laughs) Okay, sorry. Okay. Um, Okay, there he is. There he is. Oh, look. Look. He likes you, Kyle. He's trying to tell you we read my (laughs) horoscope now. (laughs) We'll see a little later. uh, But anyways, going back to what is happening. He likes your male energy. Okay. (laughs) I've got a lot of that. So, um, but then going back to uh, Sasha, was your name correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, for instance, with your specific uh, eclipses that are happening across the sky from you, they are happening in a sector of partnership. So, I already know that you're going into a big learning curve in regards to your relationships. And so, when a sector of your partnership life is activated, whether by a planetary transit or movement uh, or an eclipse, we see that there is going to be important activations, lessons, and things that you are going to experience. There are destined endings and beginnings that are happening in your relationships. So for instance, I also know that you've been having a big learning curve in regards to your intimacy and understanding of your either your, your, the balance in your current relationships, where you stand with them, Um, or what you need and what you need to find in future relationships. Mm. So, you know, are you, are you currently single? Are you currently seeing someone? And and this affects, like I said, any Gemini, because I can see from that solar perspective of the sky that 
all of these people are going to be learning certain things. There is a variety when we layer your natal chart upon it, and then I can certainly speak more in depth about that. Does this that make sense reading. to you? Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. <laughs> I know you're really interested in yeah. this. So, for instance, like, I know that you had a I, very difficult time from, like, 2014 to 2017, but that was, like, one of the darkest periods. But because of the things that were happening then, you've been sort of recovering and trying mm -hmm. to figure out how you can connect better with people. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, were you asking me if I was in a, I'm in a relationship now? Or yes, just currently still. Dating the in general. Oh, I'm, I'm not in a romantic relationship, uh, but I feel like I'm in a, I am in a very close um, relationship right now with someone, but it's not romantic. It's, but it's, you know, every day it's, it's like, I feel like it's like five relationships in one, but, um, definitely have been, uh, reprioritizing or looking at relationships in a completely different way. Cause the way I've been doing it my whole life is really fucked yes. up and, uh, sorry, I don't know if I can cut Susan. Yes. Um, basically, you know, meet someone at work and then I sleep over for like three years and, uh, <laughs> and it is terrible. <laughs> so this, for instance, when so, you're going through yeah. these cycles, it's teaching you to, excuse me, to step more into the kinds of relationships that are going to truly fulfill you. So when you are learning about patterns that aren't going to help you reach what you want, then you need to release them ultimately. And, you know, you went through yeah. a Saturn opposition, which people that study astrology know can be, you know, literally Saturn is 180 degrees ac across from you. Well, it's currently in a different sector for you right now. And that's all about your intimacy, sexuality, what you give and receive, what you need, and what is ultimately going to make you happiest in a relationship. So the sooner that you start to, mm -hmm. start to figure that out, the sooner you're going to have better and more healing and more lovely relationships. And Interestingly enough, I mean, I would go to say that it seems extremely likely that over the next year and a half, you're going to be in a more clear relationship, a more defined relationship, either moving in, you know, getting engaged, uh, making long-term plans together. However, when you go through an eclipse cycle like this, if you're with the wrong person, it will break you up and, and set you on your own path. I was actually doing a reading for a bunch of celebrities last year, and I looked at their charts and I was like, y'all getting divorced. Sorry. Uh oh. And they, oh. and they were all like, yeah. kind of like, you know, frustrated with it, but they weren't because then I got messages from every single one of them. And they were like, you're right. I'm either already seeing someone, we haven't announced it, or, <laughs> you know, or they broke up yeah, with someone, that person, and then found someone better. And that's the thing is when we hold on to relationships that aren't serving <laughs> our ultimate highest growth, then you're just not going to live the best life that you're going to. I'm not going with. to any parties with you. <laughs> no, but no, but, I mean, this was like, we all knew what we were signing up for. And anytime I'm giving a, a, a prediction or a I'm reading, joking. I know, I know, <laughs> I want to like, you you'll, know, be empowering be about it. Like you might get divorced, worry. but <laughs> you know, and this is terrible, Sasha, but I can kind of always tell when it's a couple is going to get divorced too. It's like totally. this weird. You could tell one person doesn't yeah. have the other person back. Like that's totally. pretty much it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sasha, can I give you two really blunt messages? Uh Oh, <laughs> oh no, I'm scared. Okay, I yeah. don't have to. It's, She's coming in for the kill. Yeah. Like, your, <laughs> yeah. There's no, like, as a fellow good. Sagittarian, I don't. Do, oh, do you, you're? Are you actually Sagittarius? Is that what I heard? No, earlier? she's a Gemini. Gemini Sagittarius. No, but rising? she has the. Oh, yeah. Crazy Gemini. I don't think she's actually a Sagittarius rising. I think she's probably oh, going to be okay. a Scorpio rising. I just got two things to tell you. I, I think you can handle it. The first one is get moving with your career. Don't hold back. You need to get moving. Whatever your project is, whatever you've been thinking about, whatever you're dreaming of, you've got to get moving with it. That's your first message, okay? Your second message is okay. probably a little less fun. It's to do with your relationship situation. This one is fine for right now, but whoever this person is is not the one. I don't want you to fixate on it, and I don't want you to keep thinking about, hey, maybe I should compromise my future and change my vision and what if, because this is not the person, it's someone else. But I agree with Carl, it's within the next year and a half. I'm sorry, oh, my God, I hope he's not a friend of yours and Susan's, but or she or he, I don't know, <laughs> but, or, or them in this day and age. But I will tell you, you need to look elsewhere. That's your two very blunt messages. Can I leave that with you? Well, one thing I want to even t chime in yeah. about that is that I do readings for okay. people all the time and they have a choice. If you want to stay and work through that relationship, even though you're not going to grow as much, that is your choice. Didn't in this we just lifetime. talk about that? You know, you can manifest God, whatever I you want, so but 
it's, but if it's not going to make you happy, then why are you fighting for things like that? I mean, I'm seriously, I do, the, I feel like half the, little the readings I do are about people's shoulders exes. and the big bun. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> right, right. The little lady with the hunched shoulder and the big bun came through and said, you need to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Khaleesi's. I think, yeah, she's been going on everybody's bed. <laughs> she's so here. Funny. I don't know. She's somebody, I think she's no, my no, grandma. No, I, no, I heard that from <laughs> the last guy. I was like, oh, you're not on my mom's side. That was, that was so funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look. I, I get people that say, yeah, were you asking readings, why people and then do they that? call me, wait, wait, what? what'd you say? Police was talking to. Oh, sorry. Were you, sorry. I didn't know if you were asking about why, why people stay in relationships that they know, they know that it's not moving forward. You were saying uh, that is a statement or a question. Uh, I wasn't, maybe Kyle, I, I was just going to say that that lady situation with spirits and mediums, like people say to me while I'm giving them a reading, I don't know who that is. And then they either call me a week later in the next reading. They say, oh, that turned out to me, my aunt, Kathy, who was related to this person. <laughs> exactly. And then I, I'm not going to change it. Look, it's what I psychic see is what amnesia. I see. It's he psychic can amnesia. figure it out or not. And then exactly. at least if he can relate to the message, then I know that it's coming from somewhere. And whoever that person is, that's, that's learn your dead people and then we'll figure it out. But so, I don't know. So I mean, Khalees, explain a little clearly, say, yeah. more clearly to Sasha how when you get these sort of visions and say, okay, I have some information for you. Like where, how does that come to you? Like where does it come from? The two messages that I just gave you, Sasha, came through psychically. So for me, that comes from either my higher self, my intuition, or my spirit guides talking to you um, with messages from your spirit guides. So a lot of it is energy that I'm picking up on just based on the blending or the connection. When I tune into your aura, I pick up on past, present, and future, and I get feelings about things that are going on in your life. So those messages that I just gave you were psychic, but if you would like to do a mediumship connection, we can. I definitely feel that there's an animal for you in the spirit world um, <laughs> as well as a, a, a young adult man, um, so possibly like in his 20s or 30s, but he looks like he's grown up, but he feels young in his energy um, as well as this animal, just in case you wanted to go further with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, um, maybe sure yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so I feel like it's a dog because I just, I just feel like the, the shape of the face is going out and there's, there's like sort of a, a brown fur. Her hair fur. <laughs> um, it doesn't feel black, but it doesn't feel white. So I want to go with like a dark brown color. Um, I do also feel this dog was older when it passed and was a little bit overweight. It may have had like a, a funny gait like a way of walking like a bit of a hip issue does this make sense sasha yeah my yes it does i just there was two dogs okay. that passed in my family so i'm trying to think figure oh. out which one it was mm. I feel like I need to say it was one that was put on some kind of treatment. So whether it had steroids or whether it had some kind of medication, um, there was something that was done to help this animal move forward, but it never really solved the problem. Does that make sense? Uh, gosh, dang it. Uh, oh, God, I'm the worst I, dog owner ever. <laughs> uh, I want to no, say the older of the dogs. Two. And the, dogs the older. Um, was it furry or was I, it like... Was it a furry dog or was it like less furry? Like it less... feels less furry. Like it doesn't is it feel Akita like or American a American bulldog. Is what I'm asking. Oh God, I don't know types of dogs. Um, it's got short fur, and then it's also the, of okay. Rex it's is going to breathe into the microphone now. Okay, and am I correct that there was a, a hearing issue because I feel like my ears are burning while I'm talking about this dog? So am I correct that it couldn't hear properly or had like one ear that worked and one ear that didn't? He never told me. I don't know. Uh, maybe he did. He had a lot. I mean, okay. he had a lot of issues at the end. <laughs> a okay. lot of issues at the I, end. But let me just. I, I feel like hearing was one of them. I feel like hearing was one of them. Um, oh. But look, oh, the, the message from this, this beautiful animal, or about this beautiful animal, is that um, you're not a mom right now. So, am I correct that you don't have pets right now? No. Okay, because what this dog well, is saying is you're not... pet, but I have forced it. Mm-hmm. Sorry. 
Okay, I'll, I'll just give you the message and then we'll go. Because what Here's I'm hearing is message. you're not a mom right now, but you're my mom and it's always been that way and I'm never going to let you go. So he's going to come to you in dreams. Oh. <laughs> um, you're going to see his name around. So you might meet people with the same name and there's some significance about the date of his birthday or the date that you got him that needs to be acknowledged. Like something really good is going to happen on that date. And he said the next year ahead is going to be a hard year in terms of developments and transitions, but it'll be all worth it because the year after that is your money year. So if you've been sitting there saying, when's the money going to come? When's the money going to come? I'm spinning my wheels. Nothing's happening. I feel like I need to say it's the year year after that so not this birthday but the next one and that's when it all feels free flowing does that make sense to you yeah yeah absolutely that's amazing okay okay can i leave that with you yes oh okay sorry that's crazy i, I didn't know dogs could talk you in wow I hope my cat can see yeah. awesome shit about me too. i know i had a really crazy <laughs> dream about my cat the other day um, I think it's because I went on, somebody showed me TikTok and then I was like, I was like sw swiping up, you know, and I was like, how do you make this work? And I go, all I'm getting is babies and cats. And I was like, and dogs. And I was like, I'd swipe fast on the dogs, but I said, these cats are hysterical. Like they're cats really funny awesome. and I don't want to see any fucking babies. Like just give me the cats, give me the cats, give me the cats. So then, yeah, I had enough babies. I'm done with babies. But anyways, then, um, then I had this dream about my cat, Vern. Both cats. I dreamt about both my cats at night. Vern wasn't in great shape. He had, he looked like he his legs were burned off. But but he got eaten by a, a bobcat or attacked by a bobcat, and I saved his life. And it was kind of a long week after that. But um, his but legs it, were burnt it, off. Yeah, it was really sad. <laughs> I'm, but I'm sorry. That was an awesome awesome cat. But Aww. so I'll never look at TikTok again. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> Sasha! I'm so Moral sorry. Moral to the story. Just... Fuck oh, TikTok. Can I, do one I don't want to see babies or cats because I'm gonna have a nightmare. <laughs> you just do that. <laughs> Sasha, you knew what you were signing up for. You're gonna leave right? that to the back. <laughs> Let it go. But Sasha, I'm so glad you got that loving message from your dog. Okay. Well, while I, Kyle and Susan compose themselves, I have a quick message for you, Sasha. This gentleman in the spirit world is been stepping back. <laughs> I have to I'm make sorry, one more I connection. Hear the last <laughs> That's all right. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about this cat with its legs. <laughs> it's awful. I'm so sad. Yeah, I bet it's but hilarious. But it was good to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> Making me cry. I know that was a cool cat. Ooh. I was so pissed, <laughs> and it died. Oh, I also realized that oh. I, I'm not really good with cats. I I think I'll stick with dogs. <laughs> <sighs> but I'm, oh. I, it's cool that they can talk to you in spirit. <laughs> right, Come on, Sasha. Come on. <laughs> For crazy. I mean, I feel like I hear my cat talking to me, but like not really. You know, it's like we we have an energetic bond. You know, but he's not like. Hey, Dad, you're going to make more money have I, next have week. You had, well, yeah. have, you, have you guys ever had dreams with pets that have crossed over? Like a pet that you've had that's now in spirit and then it's come to you in a dream? Am I like the only one that That's has what I just that? said. They both came back. They were in the oh, same okay, dream. Okay, that's what you meant. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, God. Right. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were just talking about something with TikTok and then I kind of like got distracted by the But spirit. listen, I apologize. If, if, if it was a message of, of hope, you oh, know, gosh. I mean, they visited me. But I listen, I... I think that, you know, our animals are very connected to our, our brains and in our, in our world. So there are a lot of things that I think Rex wants to talk to me every day. So I can imagine that in spirit, somehow they're able to give us advice. I don't know. Well, I mean, one thing that like, I, I am not, like a, it's, oh, sorry. I'm not a medium, you know, but I definitely feel like there is telepathic or energetic exchanges between That's all things. That's exactly what I was going to say. All things, yeah, even it's a rock. You know, it's telepathic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I Rex I have, just wants cheese. He just wants uh, to eat more cheese. So I don't know if he's been oh, wow. been feeding him the wrong food. <laughs> Your cat eats cheese. Wait, what? 
My cat wants cheese. No, Rex. Oh, oh Rex. Rex. Oh, cheese. yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, my dog can't stop eating. But Same Sasha, do you have any more questions before we go? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your, your reading. I... Uh, no, no. <laughs> I, I needed to hear that. Um, <laughs> no, is it terrible that when she said there was a guy, like, in his 24 that wanted to speak to me, the first thing in my head was, is he single? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the usual single. response, um, but I will tell you that he does he might still be dead, want to but... talk. He does still want to talk. So can I can I bring through a message from him mm. as well? Um, it this yeah. definitely doesn't feel like a parent, and it doesn't, but it does feel someone who's close. So I'm trying to work out if it's like a friend or a family member, whether it's a cousin or an uncle that passed younger. Um, but I was asking him how he passed, and he just said, I paid my way into heaven. So I get the impression he was a bit of a bad boy, um, and he was taking a drag on a cigarette while he said that. Um, I do feel that he lost a bit of weight before he passed, which to me would either indicate like an illness or an addiction. Does this ring any bells to you? Does this make sense for someone in the spirit world you'd be able to relate to? I really haven't been around a lot of deaths. Um, I had an older cousin that died of colon cancer and then another cousin that was, you know, was a bad, like bad, even in and out of prison stuff, but I really only met him a couple of times. So it could be a uh, Johnny, but I don't, I'm trying to think it, of a friend. That, uh, no, the, it, it definitely felt more like a family member, even if you only met him a few times. The bad boy connection is the strongest part for me. And what he was showing me is okay. that his heart stopped. Do you know if he had a situation where he would have lost weight before his, he passed, but his heart stops? It was sort of like a sudden passing. And he definitely uh, smoked. No, he was, like he smoking was is a, a thing. Long time. He was what? So no, what? no, as in you don't know, or no, as in he didn't have his heart stop. Um, his heart could have stopped, but it was it was he was in bad shape for months. Um, so okay. maybe maybe it's st still him. Yeah. Do you know mm -hmm. about the weight loss before he passed? I don't. I didn't. I didn't see a picture okay. of him. I didn't go to his funeral. Are you guys honing in on any of this? Are you guys? Is this connecting? To That's all right. You? So as as long as you can connect to the fact that he's younger, like he's sort of he's older than you, but still young for for when he passed. He's got the bad boy energy. I've got the drag on the cigarette. I've got this knowing that you were always the good girl. You were always like reading or writing or but you didn't have a ton of friends for some reason. Like you had friends, but not like a ton of friends. This is just his observations. Um, but he felt mm -hmm. like he was a social outsider and that led to like, he had guys that were really close to him, but then the majority of people he felt like he didn't connect with his message for you now is to not get into that wavelength of those people like me, those people don't like me. He's saying everyone is equal. All of that gets nullified on the other side. So stop getting into your head and messing with your own confidence about whether or not you should pursue your career because you should have done that years ago. Oh, well, I love that, except for the very last part. <laughs> <laughs> you, it will work in your favor. Timing is everything. Trust the timing. Well, I do Can know I you? from your chart that you're going to see more success when it comes to pretty much like Jupiter's going to go into this very, you know, strong alignment for you in next, su like next summer. Uh, and then also there's going to mm -hmm. be some windows in, in 2022. So... Even if you're kind of, let's say, for instance, with these eclipses, being reborn, mm -hmm. being pulled upon your destiny, you will still reach success. I'm not, by just even looking at the stars ahead, I'm not, a, like, afraid of that for you. I know that will come to you. Yeah, no, it will. Oh, I agree. That's, that's what he needs. Oh, that's what she needs. She needs a little, ah. little inspiration here. But you know what? Everything. Oh, I do. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Acting is is definitely open to you. Anything with acting or expressing yourself through sort of a creative outlet is is going to be your jam. Okay. Acting. Okay. Are you an actor? Uh, do you do anything with you stand up and acting? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know oh, that. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we've got lined up. Well, for you, that's me and the spirit. Yeah, that's so, how I met my yeah. boss. Mm -hmm. The boss man. Okay. The yeah. Boss. Well, I just because I know everyone's saying tell me to stay away from like my current relationship and everything, but I just I'm always uh, 
kind of couch surfing my way through life sometimes. I feel kind of disconnected from myself, and I feel like if I, good things do happen, it's by fate, not by hard work. So I'm just kind of like, is this like a leapfrog thing? Is this going to come from one relationship and then make connections and then get success? Or is this like I have to break the ties with everything and then success will come? Or there's no way to know that. Well, just looking at your chart, the answer that I can give you right away is that important alliances are very significant to your, to your rise over the next year and a half. But they don't necessarily have to be romantic. And they can be important business mm -hmm. partners. They can be writing partners. I've, for instance, you know, I have been involved in Hollywood and, and entertainment for quite some time. And, you know, wh when I was directing, I would form an, a, an important collaboration with an actor or a producer. Those are all important partnerships that would be ruled by these eclipses. And with you still having three more, it doesn't all have to be about one person. It can mm -hmm. be about the important partners mm -hmm. that you surround yourself with. I don't Got feel it. you're going to have to work okay. that much harder than you're working now, Sasha. Working hard enough. <sighs> <laughs> like the, su the success will come. You don't the, don't go on fucking right TikTok. That's enough. all I'm saying. Just stay the way from uh, TikTok. <clears throat> oh, no. It's it's the devil. <laughs> My cat told me that. Okay, <laughs> so don't look at uh, those other cats. Okay, just just stay away from TikTok. That's my advice. Oh, really? That's what I okay. got from my reading. <laughs> from well, my well, dream. One of my friends took that avenue, and, you know, we were collaborators at once, and now it feels kind of like some of my shit's getting ripped off. Oh, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Go for TikTok. Maybe it's the opposite. Okay, maybe yeah, you're supposed to your to cat. Be, Susan, maybe yeah. you're supposed to do TikTok. I don't know. Was there a, was there a dog there <laughs> in that dream, too? I can't remember. No, I listen. I don't know. I I don't know what to tell you. Just just follow your heart and your in, intuitions, and yeah. and try to stay strong in everything you do. That's all I can say. That's just yeah. motherly advice. No, that does not come from You're a great cat it. owner. Just so you know. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> God, Susan. God bless you so we're going to take one more call and love you Sasha you can find Sasha on love you Susan thank you so much the two in the bush oh, podcast find me on, mm -hmm. and two in the bush podcast in, uh, Instagram Sasha underscore Boggs and Twitter slappy Boggs there you go thank you for calling in I hope it was helpful God bless you. Okay. <clears throat> One more and then we're going to get going. Because uh, I know Khalees is on New York time and is super late. And she's just dying to get some beauty rest, which she doesn't need. But as we know. Hi, Adriana. How are you? Hi. I'm well. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I didn't mean to say mean things about babies on TikTok, but... I know you're curious about having one, and it's okay. I'm. I just had three. I don't need another one. But <laughs> no, I work with kids a lot, so I understand. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, you do. Okay, um, good. <laughs> I do. Kids are wonderful. Yeah, I love a, my kids. I'm a February baby. <sighs> I was just wondering what would be the best time to kind of conceive this year, and I also have a couple of spirit guides that are with me often, and I know things often. And I was kind of wondering if I'm supposed to use that information, you know, to help people in my daily life, or am I supposed to keep that information to myself, or a mix of both? Um, yeah. Have you called in before with me here? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Your voice sounds so similar to someone no. that we worked mm -hmm. with before. No. Interesting. She doesn't have a previous do you, thing. Do you want to look into the timing, Kyle? Like, what would you say for yes. timing? Because I've, is your I've birthday, got a bit of an indication, but you'll probably be the best for that. February 16th. So, so you are, you're uh, an Aquarius? Yes. Yes. So basically, um, there's, a, there's a few different factors that I already want to kind of put out there. And the first thing here is that Jupiter is about to go into your sun sign. And when Jupiter moves around the sun, it takes roughly about 12 years, and it goes into a different sector each year, roughly, and it influences our life exponentially and brings blessings and miracles there. I kind of refer to Jupiter like a guardian angel. So when Jupiter goes into your sun okay. sign, it's 
one of the most lucky periods of your entire life. We usually only get like a couple of these, you know, six. In usually. your life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. And so you actually, Jupiter's in your sign right now. Right now? Yes. Really? So the thing about it, <laughs> yes. Then why are there only season. six people on the line? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, but basically. I'm just kidding. Chapter okay. one of the coming decade for you is when Jupiter is in your sign. Oh, wow. I can and get so, pregnant? I mean, if you want to, I suppose. <laughs> um, but the thing about it is Honey, that you're... he's in the room. <laughs> it's like you're giving birth just organically to many different kinds of things. So whether that actually be for a child, that would be one of the best times of conception. So for you, I would say in between roughly, you know, I think it's about December 17th of this year until about December 28th of 2021. So Jupiter's in there giving you that luck. There's also sorts of important patterns. So I can I already know for a fact that you're going to be giving birth to important, beautiful things. So conception is wonderful there. However, if we're going to hone in on some of the other planets, I can also look at that right now as well. So for instance, I'm going to look at Venus, which would be very good for fertility. And um, oh, also you're going through eclipses and in, in actually in regards to... Oh, not those eclipses again. I know, but you're going to... It's funny because I always find when someone's asking something astrologically, Astrologically, there is some sort of indication of why. And you, my dear, are going into eclipses in your fertility and uh, pregnancy sector. Oh. And so the first one is actually November 30th. So that's a faded time. Mm -hmm. So it could represent that it would happen around then. So certainly be trying. Um, around the 30th. This November 30th, yes. Okay. I also pick up on November. So that's, yeah, so that's like, double yeah. down. Do the whole weekend. Just, you know. Yeah, absolutely. How about it? Yeah, but then the second time would be around <laughs> June 10th. And it's for, for instance, like that fertility sector would be a conception or birth. Sometimes for people, it's art. Yeah. Sometimes it's for people, it's rom romance. For you, you have a high indication that it could be in that actual fertility sector. Oh, I hope so. The other thing that I will leave you with on here is that I do see that there's an opportunity for you in regards to this. When Venus goes into your sign next year from February 1st until February 25th, that will work really well for you if you want to try. And then the last moment that I will give for you next year will be around May 8th to June 2nd. So you better but, get on it in November. Yeah, but like I said, when we look at eclipses, these are <laughs> destined moments. These are the things that shift our lives forever right. and that are written in the stars That was so November powerfully. 11th when my children were born. Totally. So, for instance, like I said, though, or that March would be... March 20th, whatever, when they were, when they were incepted. <laughs> so, yeah, that's when we would see that for you. It'll, it'll happen. I mean, I feel really strong. The fact that you have two eclipses and, the, and Jupiter going into your sign, honey, you're really at a good place. Do you want children? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> right, hey, Johnny, um, just in okay. terms of dates to 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 emphasize and to sort of like agree with what Kyle was saying I did strongly feel the month of November and I also picked up on the numbers seven and eight now the seven and eight can indicate a month it can indicate um, a period in time connected to a birthday or a part of a decade as well so it may be that you fall pregnant around a July or an August month or it may be that it's the seventh or the eighth of the month well July, July okay. and August is nine months after November so maybe that's when the baby's coming Exactly. Yeah. So take note of the number seven, eight and the month of November, plus everything that Kyle told you. And um, if you get put busy. all that together, you'll probably get your answer. Um, I don't feel like you need to worry in terms of will you have a child? It's more a matter of when. This is not a case of if it's going to be when. And I definitely feel like there's other things that are going to come up in your relationship, or I, I want to call it a marriage. So if you're not married, you're going to be married or spirit refers to it as marriage. Um, there needs to be a little bit more communication there. And then you will feel the healing of the energy on a holistic level. So do have the difficult conversations, do express what you need from each other. And I feel like that will just make the raising of the child that much smoother and that much more exciting and wonderful. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, I should have said thank You're you, welcome. by the way, too. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you guys uh, find a, a big family in your future. I, You know, it sounds like you're a lovely person, and you should have a really great future with your family. You have a lot to look forward to. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Is good luck. Is there anything You're welcome. about the spirit guide? 
Well, that, we, are, that are with me. Okay, really quickly, okay. Elise. Yeah, really quickly, I do feel that you pick up on a lot of intuitive information. And what I will say to you on this is what I say to a lot of my students. If you do feel the need to share something with someone, ask for permission first. It can be very confronting for people to receive random information from the spirit world, particularly when they're not ready for it. So if you really, really feel you need to communicate a message, you can. I don't feel that's going to be your primary line of work, but I do feel that you'll be attracted to careers that have a nurturing element to them. So I do feel in this life, you are here to be a nurturer and to guide others but I don't necessarily feel you'll do that as a reader as such but you may still be able to impart information to people along the way yep that's exactly yep that's what I'm thinking <laughs> that's exactly can I leave it. that with you I'm a teacher yeah ah, okay that makes sense fantastic thank you thank so you. much Thanks have a great night in. thank you thank so much. you Take have care. a great night okay bye Bye. So we have a couple of questions on the restream. One sure. guy said, uh, mm -hmm. "One woman, what, I'm la not laughing. I'm laughing at the guy who said I'm putting on weight." And the somebody else said, "said You know, look in the mirror. This is a spiritual show." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, though, is that you I am putting on weight. As a matter of fact, I put on six pounds since December. So, Jupiter, and you know what? I Jupiter like is it. in your sign, which okay. means it's expansion. Yeah, so and you know what else? Exp you know what else is expanding? My boobs. They're great. So yes. just leave me alone, Jesse. And also, for that, also, I'm not getting pregnant. So that's the other good news. Okay, <laughs> just so you know. Neither am I. So ever, <laughs> ever again, never. <laughs> but I, I wish only the best for us. us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not baby weight. It's just boobage weight. Okay, so um, thank you, though, for whoever was um, saving me. Um, they said, those who judge others judge oneself first. Go look in the mirror and find out how you can change yourself before making those comments. This is a spiritual podcast. Take your negative energies. Thank you, Benjamin dash Kristen Rowland. You are my friend. So I'm um, sorry I, I got a little. <laughs> Anissa said, yes, queen. <laughs> you know, I, I've had worse things said to me. Trust me. I can, um, I can take it. But I, I do appreciate everybody who called in and asked questions. There was somebody that asked, she, she, I'm sorry to hear this, but she's leaving her abusive husband in a week. Do you think this is the right thing for me to do? I'm not a psychic medium, but I think that's probably a really good idea. And, um, you know, definitely seek some psychological the help. The Go spirits ahead. are saying better late, better late than never. So she's taken her time. She'll be okay. She's, she's going to need a lot more energy in the future. So uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Susan, but I think oh. I'm about to say what you just said is that it's it's going to take her time to heal. It's going to take her time to recover and that she mustn't expect herself to be fully present from day one. It's going to be it's going to be a journey, um, but it's better that she leaves now because in a year's time, it's she would have been in much worse shape is what I'm being shown. I agree. I I was in an abusive relationship for a year or so, and it was battered woman syndrome is no no joke. So if you need help, seek help. Um, definitely, there are organizations out there that can help you, and also therapy is great. Um, but do do the right thing and and take care of yourself first. Definitely. But. Um, and I appreciate uh, Benjamin. Hi, yeah, you're a beautiful soul too, Benjamin. I appreciate it. And um, I, I want to thank my guest today, uh, Kyle Thomas. You can find him at kylethomasastrology.com. And he is uh, available to do your horoscope, your readings. I don't know what he charged. I don't know anything about him except for that he does a great job. Also find him at uh, horoscope.com mm -hmm. and also give him your, your uh, Instagram page. So Instagram is the main place that I operate out of. My screen name is Mr. Kyle Thomas and I release daily horoscopes. I release all sorts of, you know, power horoscopes and, and really try to connect with people and build a community of astrology and spiritually like-minded people and to really focus on, you know, improving your day yes. no matter what. So definitely connect with it me there. It does. He's very positive, but 
Um, at the end of the year, I guess everything's going to flip upside down again on December 21st, because that's the day before my birthday, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about that later. We'll be back. Oh, not today? Okay. Oh, do you want to talk about now? Uh, about yeah, right now? before I... Before I... <clears throat> For instance, okay, so going back to what I was saying earlier on today's show is that we have so many powerful transformative aspects that are happening in the sky. And the way that I would like people to kind of envision is envision it is that as above, so below. So as these planets are clashing or in alignment, so is our lives. And so we can see that being represented in our represented in our relationships, interactions with the public, all sorts of, you know, government, social, cultural situations. Mm -hmm. And the thing about this <clears throat> is that we have another conjunction, which is a beginning when two planets align. And over the last 200 years, we have had the great conjunction, which is Saturn and Jupiter uh -huh. in Earth signs. So this means that this is where power has been distributed for the last 200 years throughout humanity. Yeah, Saturn so, sounds powerful. Well, yeah, absolutely. And that's your ruler. So you love that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing about this is <laughs> that with Saturn being the structure of humanity and Jupiter being, you know, all of the gifts and the blessings that are being bestowed, it was very focusing significantly upon, t um, I'm sorry, uh, materialism, consumerism, you know, abuse of the, the world's resources. We have billionaires now, all of this kind of focus upon wealth and the, the, the material mm -hmm. world. That has been very significant for the last 200 years. However, we are living through a transitionary period where now over the next 150 years, we are going to have great conjunctions of Saturn and Jupiter in the air signs. So the thought leaders over the next 150 years are going to become the people that are in power. Those that are the philosophers, mm -hmm. the astrologers, the psychics, the, the people that are focusing on science, mm -hmm. uh, discussion. Hopefully all of, science is going to prevail. It will, you know, and that's going to be a very important thing. However, with the air elements being slightly de de detached from emotion, the intellect will be where power is. Right. So the thing about this is we this conjunction happens this year on December 21st. Right, and the day so, before my birthday. Yes. So this, And we're going to get a vaccination too, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. Not, not right, right away. away but yeah. I believe that the, the vaccination is going to happen right around then, but it's not going to be fully distributed. Until, right. Like, uh, only summer. for the, you know, medical personnel and yeah. teachers and those yeah. at risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's also just really the wealthy. Mm. Yeah. And the real wealthy. Yeah. 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 And to be really honest, that's how I see it. Well, um, they got to run the country, whatever. It's true. Keep it going. In a lot of ways. Keep it going. Um, anyways. We don't uh, need any more sick presidents. Okay. Let's just move on. <laughs> Yeah. So anyways, with this great conjunction, uh, we are going to be seeing that there are shifts and important things that are going to be taking place around this time on a global scale, but also to watch what's happening in your life. Whenever we have these very powerful planets that are still in close alignment, they're still going to be pretty close until roughly about February or so. So we're going to still be seeing this oh. important transi transition so happening around So it takes a couple the, months. It's going to still, yeah. Oh, okay. But this is setting the pattern for the next I 150 years. I am years. too impatient. I want this shit done. <laughs> I want to be out of this year. Like, well, the thing is, when you look back on this I know this it's year, a good transition and we're going to learn from it, but I honestly, this is... It, this has been tumultuous for everybody. I mean, it, it's just not just me because I'm a Capricorn. No, or totally. you because you're a Sagittarius. I'm a Taurus, yeah. But. Taurus. Or <laughs> because, you know, you're... It, Sagittarius. It's Sagittarius. nasty for everybody. But we have had a lot of conflict in the sky. And moving forward... Yeah, I feel it. The main big things that we're going to be seeing next year as a, for like a brief 2021 prediction that I'll give for people is that we're going to be seeing that Uranus and Taurus, which rules wealth and money and prosperity, clashing very significantly with uh, the planets that are in Aquarius, which we're going to have Saturn, we're going to have Jupiter. Uh -huh. And the thing about this is that Aquarius rules community, rules people. So it's going to be a huge separation in wealth. There's going to be wars in a sense yeah. about money yeah because that's people be are not able to go to work thing. that's going to be the main thing that's going to be happening mm -hmm. next year however one of the probably things probably race I'm, too well that's going to be that's triggered by the eclipses in sagittarius and gemini oh there's lots of big focus on that that's so that will be the happening latest as well. is these poor jews in in brooklyn and parts of new york can't go to worship and they're cl they're clamping down on them and they are that's mm -hmm. the next war like now it's becoming a, a religious war you know, we're going to go through a lot. It's not. It's even... not going to get to that. Okay, so so we're wait. You live in Brooklyn area, right, Khalees? Uh no, I'm in I'm in Manhattan. I lived in Brooklyn before, but I I don't foresee that 
becoming a, a major a big issue. Thing. I, I it was feel isolated. Like it's, it's, I mean, there's cases flaring up left and right all the time. In two weeks' time, there'll be cases flaring up in New Jersey and then cases flaring up in Staten mm. Island and then the hospitals will be overwhelmed. This this coming winter in New York is going to be an absolute nightmare um, and anyone who thinks that it's not going to come back, well, wait and see. It's going to be um, explosive I don't know, I just, around November 12th. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm not looking forward to it. I've looked oh, yeah. into alternative accommodation over the new year. Um, and then in the end, I just decided to stay. But so, yeah, it's, it's <clears> when not you say be a November winter. 12th. Okay. So the election is November 4th, mm-hmm. 3rd, 4th, 4th. It's right. the 4th. Okay. And does that mean it's going to be not only the virus, but other stuff after the election? Because the 12th is only a few days after the. We will not have a president that is going to be fully elected until everything is sorted out. I don't think it's going to really be sorted out until... Mm. Let me give you the date. Um, <laughs> Kyle, when does Mercury go direct? Mercury goes direct on November 3rd. Okay. And so this ah! is the thing. Oh, we're yeah, going that's when through, the asteroid's going to land. All of the mail-in ballots, favorite. all of that. And Mercury, rule, Mercury rules communication. So all the, the, yeah. the, the, the post office, all of this. That's why it's going to be so chaotic. <laughs> My favorite Kyle Thomas message of the year is that Mercury goes direct on November 3rd, and that is yes. the date of the election. Yes, okay. yeah. yes. I, I can feel that. That's Best probably message. coming. Mercury leaves shadow on uh, November 19th. So by then, we, will sh- we should have more accurate information. So by then, I feel Wait, pretty confident we'll by, have by when we'll November have 19th. We'll have more information about who won the election. It's going to so be much So it's going to take a yeah. couple of weeks? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. But still, there's going to be more things that are being sorted out because there's so much astrological weather. We're about to go into all of these important eclipses. And for instance, the United States has a natal chart. Every, you know, every a house has a natal chart. A pet has a natal chart. You know, a relationship has a natal chart. Well, we had a lunar eclipse on the United States birthday this year. Right. Showing this was a right. tre- oh, yeah. tremendously powerful My house immense flooded. year that was going I to be happening. I had a flood and our, the water came into the house. Totally, was- totally. And the thing about that, though, is that we also would look at the rising sign of the United States. Well, some astrologers say that the United States is a Gemini rising. And some astrologers say that the United States is a Sagittarius <laughs> rising. So that debate in itself is the fact that we're going into eclipses. We are in eclipses of Sagittarius and Gemini. Everything about the United States is going to be changing over the next year and a half. Uh, it's like a pregnant woman. It's more than mm-hmm. that. <sighs> <laughs> da dun dun Got more. You know. I wish, you know, <laughs> usually usually Kyle shows up and he's, he's giving out life and uh, love and light. You know, he's, oh, you're going to be like the last at at Halloween. You know, we saw each other at Rebecca. Can you believe it's a year almost? I know. I love we, you. We had wow. the Caroline show and, and you were like, oh, you're going to be rich. Everything's going to be great. Everything's wonderful. And I, really, and I was like, God, he only gives me good news. You know, I just don't know if I believe this shit now. <laughs> no, but we're talking. Yeah. But now, no, we <laughs> talked. <clears throat> but you did talk about your money stuff. doesn't come until next year. That's when your income is going to rise. Yeah, I don't care about the money. I don't. Yeah. The money is not the issue. I I work for peanuts here, but um, it, and it's not the point. The point is, it's it's the world evolving, and we're all trying to figure out how each one of us is surviving in it, and what it's like. It's like a war zone, but you know we. Nobody can be a pussy about this. You have to just keep putting one foot in front of the other. If you want to make fun of me on Facebook because I gained some weight, well, yeah, I've been sitting in my fucking house for nine months, and I can't even walk down the street without worrying about an anarchist ra- grabbing my fucking purse and running with it, okay? So, sorry. I didn't I'm realize fat. Pasadena was worse than Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I listen. I I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that. I live in a really great country, and we are in you know lucky to be where we are. But it's I I want to know how we're going to get to the next step. How we're going to get past this, and how our kids we are going to no, bring in another like, generation. You know, I mean, obviously, the woman that called earlier wants to have a baby in the midst of this. I my kids yeah. are afraid. They're not gonna. They're not gonna have kids <laughs> anytime soon. No, I, 
I honestly feel what I, you know, we spoke about this a couple of months ago when we did the sort of COVID episode where we were talking about what's to come. This may happen again. We may have more pandemics and I feel we will over the next mm -hmm. 10 years or so, but I feel Could that we'll worse. find ways to cope. Um, I don't feel it will be as bad as this because we'll have systems, but I right. do feel like life will go on and I do feel like people will find new ways to surge forward and still be excited about their day. I mean, if you think about it, September 11 came, it destroyed the nation for a period of time. People found a way to get their lives back together and get happy again with a new perspective. Yeah. And I feel that's what this will be. I have so a pretty good life. I even stuck in my all house all day. Lost. But, but yeah. listen, we all have to just sort of come together and be positive and be patient and live mm. in our own existence, like, you know, figure out how we're going to pay for the next meal or how we're going to, you know, educate our kids and how we're going to stay sane through it all, you know, for another, what, six months. And then hopefully. So here's the thing that I want to at least put the sense of hope out there is, you know, going back to the great conjunction, we are all being forced to evolve. But the thing is, even right now yes. in the midst of a piece of darkness, this is not even as dark as the world has ever been. And no. the thing about Not this is that there, exactly, there are people that are still falling in love every day. There are still people that are having children and, you know, becoming pregnant every day. There are still people watching their dreams mm -hmm. come true and fighting for what they believe every day. And that is what makes life the most beautiful is that even when things are difficult, there is still hope. There is still light. Yeah. And that no matter what you're going through, it will get better. And I want a vaccine for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we can arrange something for you it's the 22nd i want a fucking oh. vaccine so i can like walk outside and not worry about getting sick i mean i just i i, I kind of joke about that it's actually a joke i'm i'm not going to try to be the privileged one even if i might be but i I really do believe, I think things will be better in December and because it's, I believe in it, that's all. I just want to manifest it. I want us all to collectively manifest this. There's 78 people watching. I want us to all pray. <laughs> One of the things that I do want to also offer as a, as a piece of insight that I've been looking into with next year is that for the last several, several years, several decades, we've been dealing with planets that like are constantly retrograde. We have like maybe a month where all of the planets are direct. And when the planets are direct, that means that all of our plans, all of our relationships, everything can move forward. Right. We have like three months next year where all of the planets are direct. And we've had okay. such a little amount of time it's this so year. I'm excited for that. Uh, I have yeah, to look up, months? I'm actually going to write and release an article about this by the end of the year. Yeah, where yeah. can we find that? It would be on kylethomasastrology.com. Okay, yeah. So check so. out his articles because he's, he's got all these there's so much info little, yeah i know he he talks fast but you should see how much information is on his website Fine. and i Kalis too like um check her out at calisalmone.com if you want to you know hear more about you know obviously she talks to pets if you want to talk to your pets um <laughs> and i didn't know that i i wasn't quite aware of that oh. Yeah, dead people, dead pets, live people, psychic readings. I'm also doing a lot of workshops at the moment. I'm teaching a manifestation masterclass. I'm running a Halloween seance. And then I've also got a oh, crystal when? workshop coming up. When? Uh, on Halloween. It's, oh, the details so are on my website. You, but I'm hosting a Halloween I'm not going. seance on Halloween. I want to go see that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and then are you sold out yet? Crystal. I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, it's, it's getting there. The okay. crystal workshop is on November 10th. So that's going to be like in the middle of the astrological rainstorm. Um, so who doesn't want to talk about crystals in a time of need? You know, you can come right. come along to my workshop and talk about crystals. Um, <laughs> or you can take my manifestation masterclass in 2021. Okay. So, so that's all that's at CaliSimone.com. Correct. And then um, you can find me at First Lady of Love. And I'm here on live stream, drdrew.tv. YouTube, blah, 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 with Drew all the time. And uh, we'll be back hopefully next week and um, we'll chit chat some more about psychic mediums and astrology and whatever comes up. I mean, it's a free country. I mean, we can do what we want. So. Right. Well, next week will be Mercury retrograde. So there next, will. Next Wednesday? Uh, it starts no, on next Tuesday. Seven days. 
Seven, seven days. days. Okay. Um, so well, seven days we probably won't like have any. So. We won't have any electricity in the studio, so <laughs> we'll see if we'll be back. Bust out the candles. But God bless everybody who who hung in here, and don't forget to vote. You know, we do want, even though we didn't watch the debates, please vote for who you want. I'm voting for Kanye, and um, and then um, also just check out. Our daily podcast. Kyle's Dose, reaction. Dose of Dr. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also Ask Dr. Drew, which we just did a great one today. We talked all about COVID-19 and the cures and how the president made it through. And so with two prominent doctors and Dr. Drew. And also we will be doing a dose of Dr. Drew tomorrow evening if you want to make fun of me there. So, um, <laughs> but <laughs> thank you again for watching. Go to drdrew.com and have a great night you guys thanks for joining me bye bye everyone <laughs>